This time I dig deep to uncover the mysterious history of the giant mound builders who once inhabited New Jersey. Hi, my name is Jenna Bosegger. Thank you so much for watching my Cryptic Cryptids YouTube channel as I go deep into the state of New Jersey to look for evidence of giant mound builders. The giant mound builders of New Jersey were the Allegans or the Alagui. And there's also legends that explained what happened to them. So join me for a deep dive into the mysterious ancient civilizations of the largest man-made shell mound on the North Atlantic coast. And it can still be seen today in Tuckerton, New Jersey. So who were these giant mound builders and what clues did they leave behind besides these monumental earthworks? The number of shells it took to make the mound is evidence of their long-standing control of the area in the ancient past. So when did they leave and why? And I have to search for answers and piece together this history because our written history has holes, missing empty parts that don't make sense because there are lies by omission. Searching these legends from the Lenape and the Iroquois who lived during this time, fill in the blanks and make complete sense to the big picture and to what happened and who these giants were. From pinelandsalliance.org, the first people of the pines inhabited New Jersey and the Pine Barrens at least as early as 12,000 years ago. That was 10,000 to 8,000 BC. So then there is a new paragraph and it says, by 1200 AD, Native Americans called the Lenape settled in the Pine Barrens. From ushistory.org, it says that the Iroquois arrived 4,000 years ago. Neither one of these groups were the mound builders that were there as early as 12,000 years ago. Those were a different group of people and there was not a biological connection to them. The Lenape have been passing down the story of what happened when they came in contact with these people. Alagui were constructing and engineering ceremonial mound sites, pyramids, and all kinds of huge monumental structures. The Delaware, the Iroquois, the the Lenape, their names all have to do with identifying as being the first people, original, it says original people, genuine people. And they also say that there was another group that was here before them. Both things are true, that they are the first humans to have arrived in North America, but yet they weren't the first civilization. The giants and the giant skeletons are connected as well to the mounds. And coming from javzworld.com, the largest shell mound in the North Atlantic and the legends of giants near Tuckerton, New Jersey, it says in 1906, archeologist Francis Gordon published Aboriginal fishing stations on the coast of the Middle Atlantic states. And in the book, Jordan describes his travels to the Shell Mound in 1888 and 1892. And he includes a photo of bones collected in the area with a footnote that reads, one of the skeletons measured over seven feet and was that of a veritable giant. It was plain to see that the death was caused by a fracture of the skull produced by some blunt weapon. The blood which had congealed along the track of the wound was surprisingly brilliant, notwithstanding the lapse of centuries. Shell Mount has looked the same for centuries prior to extractions for local lime kilns. The cedar trees on the mountains can still be seen and, there are, and they are several hundred years old. Were they planted after the mound was made or did they just grow naturally over the passage of time? It's a mystery. And based on the information from Francis Gordon, 
No one has claimed to be the builders of the mound. Now, Tuckerton was colonized in 1764, but by then the locals had retreated from the coast, and those who lingered in the vicinity did not regard the mound as the work of their progenitors, but by a race much older than their own. They were not a race of tall humans. They were different. They were as different as the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, who were also prehistoric species of humans that were living at the same time as them. And they were more like those species of humans than like our own. It matches up with all of the things the Lenape are saying about their own history. It says, neither the Lenape or Delaware claim ownership of the mound or share any culture with the builders of the mound. And the evidence of the mound shows there was a much earlier presence and period of occupation of this country, combined with all the other mound sites that traded and lived in peace in North America for thousands of years. And another important piece to the puzzle comes from the Lenape legend of the war with the Alagui. So who were the Alagui? They were described as a race of prehistoric giants. When these first humans got as far as the Mississippi River and found it inhabited by the prehistoric Alagui mound builder giants, also known as the Mississippians. The Alagui are said to be the oldest tribe of the United States, of which there is a distinct tradition also called the Alagans, and the term is perpetuated in the principal chain of mountains traversing the country. The tribe is from an antique period and had a seat of power in the Ohio Valley and its confluent streams, which were the sites of their numerous towns and villages. Originally, they were said to have been born of the name Ali or Aleg. I wonder if they mean Allah. And hence the names Alagui and Talagui. By adding the radical of this word to the particle Haney or Ganey, meaning river, they describe the principal scene of their residence. So namely the Allegheny or River of Allegans, which is now called the Ohio. And it says that the word Ohio is of Iroquois origin and from a far later period. After the conquest of the country in alliance with the Lenape and during the Iroquois Wars, it says they were a conquered people. From the traditions of the Lenape given to the Moravian missionaries, when the lamp of their traditionary history still threw out its flickering but enlivening flames, the Allegans had been a strong and mighty people capable of great exertions and doing wonders. That's coming from the Lenape who conquered them. They're not referring to them as being these cannibals. Mississippi, Lenape or the Delaware tell of traveling eastward many nights when they came to the river of fish, which is the Mississippi. And there they met another nation sending spies across the Mississippi eastward and that the spies found the land inhabited by a powerful nation with large towns and fortifications. And this powerful nation was named the Alagui. According to the tradition of the Lenni Lenape, at some point they crossed the Mississippi. And it says that at some point, the Alagui saw that the Lenape were not small tribe, but a great nation and they asked them to stop their eastward migration. But the Lenape continued, and the way I see it, it's Alagui were attacked by the invaders. Iroquois joined forces with the Lenape. They were two totally different groups of people coming from two totally different places, spoke two totally different languages, but they did have one thing in common, they were the humans. Abraham Lincoln had a quote, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. When you have alliances based on shared enemies and those enemies then are conquered, those alliances become dangerous. The Iroquois made war on the Susquehannocks, the giants in Pennsylvania, 
and they allied with the Lenape, who made war on the Alagui. Together, they made it their mission to get rid of these mound builder giants. So the Lenape were finally able to settle in New Jersey. And once the giants were gone, what do you think warlike tribes do? They turn into peaceful tribes? No, they keep finding ways to make war. And the Iroquois then turned on the Lenape. And it says the Iroquois, after having allied themselves with the Lenape, against the Alagui, later became the masters of the Lenape, running war paths through their territory. It goes on to more wars between all the different humans, on to Europeans turning on the Iroquois, turning on all the Native Americans, and not wanting to share the land with anybody. That is the history. News reports of giant skeletons being found in New Jersey. This is a very detailed article titled, Indians Once Roamed Over This District. The Earth Still Giving Up Artifacts, a representative of the Smithsonian Institution interred from one of these two mounds, implements made of copper. The Indian, which the white man found, made his implements of wood and stone. Eventually, the earlier mound builders had an advanced stage of civilization. Mounds such as these, and even intricate ones, are to be found here westward to the Mississippi. This one's from 1890, and it says, May's Landing, New Jersey. For over a week, past crowds have been flocking to the site of the unearthed Indian graveyard near Edgewater Avenue in Pleasantville. The first lot of skeletons unearthed was about 1,000 yards from the city post office and embraced eight bodies closely laid together in a deep chamber, snugly packed in with tortoise, oysters, and clamshells. One of this number had bead and shell decorations, which together with its extreme height points to the fact that it must have been the powerful old chief. The University of Pennsylvania has been given the right to search for relics on their land, and these researchers have been watched by thousands of people with great interest besides weapons of war, savage ornamental war decorations, and numerous valuable shell stones and over 50 skeletons that have been exhumed. And the curator of the association is continuing the search and the skeletons are to be shipped to the university at once. They run in size from small child to seven feet in height and one supposed to have been at least eight feet in height. About 50 students were upon the ground this morning and continued their search until stopped by rain. The citizens gaze in silent wonder on the relics of a race that one time ruled the land. For seven miles along the shore can be seen the large mounds of clam and oyster shells left here by Indians who used to congregate here by the hundreds to open oysters for winter food. And it is near these shell mounds that the great number of skeletons have been taken up. In some instances, weapons of war made of stone and flint have been found lying close beside some exceedingly large skeletons. The relics will be put on exhibition at the Museum of the University of Philadelphia. Another example of these fading news reports are not part of the written history. And no one's going to remember what all of these people saw and knew for a fact it's gonna be legends it, like now that nobody believes nobody takes seriously because it's been omitted it's a lie by omission and you won't find these unless you actually look for it and most people they're too busy studying what they need to in college let alone trying to study the controversy Here's another one. Unearthed giant skeleton. New Jersey man makes discovery while digging in garden. Kearney, New Jersey. The skeleton of a man six feet, seven inches tall was dug up here. Aspinwall was digging in the garden 
at the back of his house, intending on transplanting a peach tree. He found the bones of a man's right arm as soon as he broke the ground. The entire skeleton was buried only a foot and a half below the surface and was in good condition. He's lived on the property for more than 25 years and said he's sure the body had not been buried in his garden during his occupancy. This one, remains of a giant. A human skeleton of unusual size has been discovered in Harsimus County, New Jersey, buried in oyster shells of immense size. It was in sitting posture when found and is doubtless the frame of an Indian of olden time. It must have been eight feet high. The skull measures 15 inches from roof of the nose over the top of the base of the occipital bone and to the and two feet in circumference containing a full set of teeth even sound and white this is a pdf i found about tuckerton's race of giant men it talks about finding giant skeletons smithsonian is mentioned here it tells of several skeletons being unearthed in the late 1800s on the plow of twin brother farmers arden alf jilson and as the story goes these Indians were not believed to be Lenny Lenape, rather it was believed they were murdered by the Lenny Lenape, as the bashed skulls of the dozen skeletons were testament to the massacre. But the most interesting thing about these skeletons was their size. They are described in the Prince account as a giant-like race, seven feet tall, and there was considerable digging on their farm and the adjoining meadow. A field worker journeyed from the Smithsonian to help piece together the evidence. The skeletons, the accompanying artifacts, and the gargantuan shell mound on the meadow. It says, but there's no documents or artifacts from the original that survived. So there was a letter written to the Smithsonian. He wanted to know about the availability of the field notes of the Smithsonian ancients that from the previous century and he surprised him by saying he'd look into it and look for any records of the Jilson or the dig at their farm. And it says over the next several months, he called back many times, finally gave him a response saying, there's no reference to any correspondence or donations coming from individuals living in Tuckerton, New Jersey. No records of material from this area in their collections. And she was sure that the museum does not have the Jilson Mound Skeletal Collection, or any of the archaeological materials from that site. Her assuredness comes from the recent inventory of all the collection in response to the Native American Grave Goods Preservation and Recreation Act. And, you know, that's the end of that. So he's really trying to get the information that the Smithsonian confiscated and then said they don't have. The Smithsonian did not give up any of their confiscated artifacts. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notifications so you can join me next time. And until then, bye!